All right. Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Investor Pitching Webinar. Um, today we will have two pitchers. Uh, actually, one of them, Friends and Burgers, who will be starting, is not really pitching anymore as their uh, as their share offering was oversubscribed in in about a week. Um, they raised around a million euros, which makes them pretty much the fastest case in a long while. And um, so they will be starting just telling a bit about how their um, <coughs> around went and what they learned from it and what you can also learn from it. And following that, there will be um, Winled, who, who currently has an ongoing round, and they will be then presenting their their own round. Uh, as usual, um, if you are unable to hang out till the end, we will also be sending the recording to you by email, and it will also be on our YouTube channel, uh, at Investor's YouTube channel, so you can also check it out afterwards. But without further ado, I'll just give the seat to Friends and Burgers, and they can present themselves and their funding round. Yeah, hello everybody, and good morning or good day, depending on where you sit at the moment. Good morning or good afternoon. Yes. My name is uh, Peter Fagerholm, and I'm the CEO of Friends and Burgers. And uh, together with me today here is... Uh, Kai Fagerholm, I'm the CFO, and also responsible for uh, <coughs> new locations. And uh, Kai is also the chairman of the board in Friends and Burgers. As you know, this uh, our uh, uh, equity offering uh, is already closed. It went it went well, and we we were able to sell the shares in only one week after we became public with the offering. But still, we we like it. Uh, a moment. Okay. I hope you can see see the picture well now here. Yeah. See? Yes. It should be okay. Yes. But first we would like <coughs> briefly to tell tell you about friends and burgers uh, in a nutshell, what we call it. Um, uh, those of you who have uh, read our pitch and seen the, the, the pitch video. Uh, have noticed that we talk a lot about fresh cash oil, and fresh cash oil is our strategy. <coughs> when we look at the, the market at the moment, the, the restaurant market, um, we know the traditional sector, uh, fast food, and then during the last, I would say, last 10, 15 years, uh, fast cash oil has evolved and uh, grown quite fast. We think this is a really interesting uh, trend and change in the market that takes place at the moment. Our position, Franz and Berger's position, go as we see it one step further. We go into what we call fresh cash. -up. Means that we are, uh, so to speak, we are uh, in the high end of the fast cash. -up. Emphasizing more freshness, uh, more ingredients, locally produced than traditionally done in the uh, fast casual sector. So for us, we have uh, we have a few uh, uh, building stones that we build the, the whole concept on. One is uh, fresh ingredients, and we believe very strongly in using fresh ingredients. This means that means that we uh, do basically everything that is served in the restaurant is done from fresh ingredients in our own kitchen. That uh, goes for uh, for the for the buns. We have a small bakery in our restaurants. It goes for the meat. We buy fresh beef, uh, bought as locally as we can, and we grind it and make the the. the the, the meat in, in, in our own kitchen. And also the, our fries. We are here in Finland, 
quite well known for our uh, what we call triple cut fresh fries. Means that we start every day, we start from a fresh potato and then we triple cook them. And as far as we know, we, we, we are the only restaurant in the world in this uh, sector, in this segment, uh, selling uh, these kind of uh, 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 fries. Um, and as I uh, said, we try to source as local as possible. Uh, and um, this means if we take, take, for example, in Finland here, uh, our our uh, rate for uh, uh, locally sourced here in Finland is or is about maybe ninety seven percent is bought here in Finland out of all the ingredients we use. And also, when we make everything in our own kitchen, that means that we uh, we uh, uh, we have full control about what 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 is done in the kitchen and one part of our concept also is to use as little additives as possible we always avoid additives when it is possible and this um we see this is also a very interesting uh, position to have on the market already today and uh, and above all in the coming years there's more and more people interested in, and I mean really interested in, to know what they eat. And, uh, and quite a few people are willing to pay a little bit more if they know that this is fresh, it is not full of e-codes, this is uh, clean food. And the relation between what we eat and how we feel and, and our health is um, gaining more and more interest. Uh, I would say year by year. So what we do in, at French and Burgers, we, we simply serve, uh, as we call it, fine dining food. In a way, French and Burgers is a five-star restaurant. But the food is way more affordable and you can get the food, get into the restaurant, eat and get out way faster than in any fine dining restaurant. This uh, is what we call fresh casual, and uh, we see that this uh, is already and will be one of the fastest growing segments in the, in, in, in the restaurant markets in, in the future. Uh, in Finland and also in other countries, because there is, a, there is a, no big difference between uh, we talk about uh, all uh, Western countries, all of them, all of us uh, look pretty much in the same way at food and, and uh, ingredients and raw materials at the moment. So I think I now let uh, Kai continue to tell about, uh, about the share offering. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. So this is the next next uh, slide in our presentation. Uh, but before I go into the specifics in the in the uh, offering, uh, uh, when it comes to to as Peter uh, told about and introduced the, the the building blocks in our strategy uh, and what they all include, uh, when it comes to to our expansion strategy these building blocks are really important because these are the reason why we can uh, establish and and go implementing a strategy where we want to open up restaurants in major cities around Europe in the coming years because we source everything locally and we make everything in restaurants so we don't need to build uh, complicated logistic setups to be able to run our restaurants because we are really local where we go so if we open up in London or in, in, in Amsterdam or in, in, in Barcelona 
it's more or less the same way uh, that we would do as in, in Oulu in Finland. So the share offering, uh, first we uh, a few words about the valuation. Uh, this was quite a, a difficult task for us to, to decide about the valuation. So what we did is that we, uh, we, we analyzed the concept. Uh, somehow at some level we realized that we, uh, <clears throat> we have been able to, 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 to uh, prove to ourselves that the concept it works and we have a strong feedback from customers also in Finland and in Denmark and uh, uh, so we know that the concept works and then when we look at the market we can see uh, quite a huge potential uh, if you only look at Europe it's, it's a huge market when it comes to, 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 to uh, the, the fresh casual uh, position. So then with these two basic things in the bottom and then uh, in discussions with advisors, we came up with this valuation. And now after we, uh, we closed the, the issue, we also realized that uh, perhaps we were quite right and got a, also a, a strong feedback from the financial market from investors that this was, uh, was, was the right level. So then uh, in uh, more detailed terms, uh, during the, the first phase, the silent phase, we raised 310,000 <coughs> euros. And then as already mentioned in the beginning, uh, it, it was only public for a week before it was fully subscribed, 980,000 euros. Uh, one really important thing as we see it is that we also ourselves and our close network invested money in friends and burgers in this share issue. Uh, approximately 250,000 out of the million came from ourselves, the old owners and our close, uh, close network. Uh, the, we were quite successful of course when we, we, we closed the the issue in a, in a week and uh, uh, when we analyzed what we did what we did right uh, we, we came to the, to the result that, uh, that the way we marketed the, the issue was quite, uh, uh, quite important. Uh, this is something that we did together with investor. Uh, investor used their channels and we used our channels and, and but had, had the same uh, uh, in the whole content in, in what, we, what we told of course <clears throat> uh, and we were also able to, to get the, the main media in Finland to cover the, the issue uh, Kaupalehti the, 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 the largest business newspaper in Finland had the story about the issue we also used SOME social media and of course word of mouth uh, we were ourselves quite active <clears throat> during the, the first days especially contacted people in our network and also other people uh, that we knew are active investors and uh, uh, we're selling the, 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 the shares uh, actively. So at the end of the day we are uh, really satisfied with how everything went. Uh, we are really satisfied with the uh, investor as a partner. Uh, in their model, what we especially liked was the, the, the silent phase. The concept with the silent phase where we were first able to try the market before we went public. Because Friends and Burgers is, a, is a, a company on the consumer market, it's really important to be successful when you go out with a share issue like we did. Yeah, and now when we, we look ahead, look into the future, as we say in the, in the pitch, we plan to open two or three restaurants per year in the coming years. And of course this uh, uh, share issue now gives us um, uh, strength to, to look ahead and at the moment we are looking for locations in um, uh, different cities in Europe, we are quite a good uh, contact network of uh, uh, real estate owners and uh, 
and also uh, um, shopping, centers. shopping centers and um, so this is what we are going to, to, to work quite a bit with now the coming months and and, and um, we plan to open as soon as possible in, uh, in, in next year the, the, the first one first new restaurant uh, in, in, in a new country abroad not counting Denmark because Denmark we are already active and um, yeah we see that the future looks uh, looks very interesting um, one could maybe think that uh, well the bur burger market is, um, is so com competitive and there is uh, so many players in, in the market which is true but then again referring back to where we started fresh cash out uh, is a growing segment and we look more at that segment uh, so we, we think that we can we are able to, to to take the benefits of the thing that the burger market is huge and the second benefit from that we are well positioned we have a good position on on, on this um, uh, fresh casual market in that segment so we see that we have an interesting journey ahead and we have a team today of uh, about 130 people uh, working with us and we do put a lot of emphasis into, in, in, into training our staff because we, the way we look at restaurant business service is extremely important and it's uh, extremely important that everybody um, work everybody in our team work in the way we, we, we think we need to work in order to get the best product that's why one of our main values that we teach and tell our our, um, uh, our team members is that every burger matters we sell a lot of burgers at the moment and we need to succeed with every burger every burger meal And as I mentioned, we try to avoid the avoid uh, additives, and we see this is uh, uh, has a really huge potential. It is a lot of work. We have been working in almost three years now, step by step, with different ingredients, uh, because our ambition is really high. And 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 there is all this. Not always, but in many cases, there are in food some component with some e code. And for us, we try to, 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 to get into a position where we could tell that this uh, food that we eat now is really made of fresh food, it has no additives, and um, the main reason, of course, is that we know from experience and it's quite easy to understand that there is a strong relation between a fresh and clean ingredient and the taste of the end product so the main reason we do all this uh, put such a huge effort into this is to get the best final the, be the best end product and we think that the, the, the difference is so big so, so, so our customers are able to, to, to notice the difference. So are we ready for questions? I think we are ready for questions. There's one question coming, coming here. That's uh, Joel asking, are you moving outside to the Nordics? To other parts of Europe, or are you ready to comment on this yet? Outside of the Nordics, uh, definitely. Uh, we are. Uh, last week, I was. I attended a, a, an exhibition, Mapic, in in Cannes, in France, uh, and met quite a lot of people in the in the retail, re, real estate for retail business in in Europe. 
So we are looking at the moment, we are looking at the UK, we are looking at the Benelux countries and Germany mainly. We also have been looking a little bit at Spain, so, so, but these countries are the, the, where we are looking, looking for uh, locations at the moment. Yes, any further questions, please? There's still time for more questions. Uh, there's one question here. Uh, Bill asked about uh, uh, how it is to work with investor and what were their uh, roles. As Kai already mentioned, we have a really good experience from working with investor, starting from the very first meeting actually the very first telephone call that we made made and 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 the way they they welcomed us into the discussion and uh, was um, quite impressive and uh, uh, we had a few discussions then before we we had made the specification for this case and and uh, we got a lot of, <coughs> of help with them there was quite a few things that we um, we maybe didn't think about before, and together we found found what we can tell now uh, a very successful successful case. Uh, of course, as Kai also mentioned here, we um, we did a lot of own work with our own network. And we got quite a bit of sub sub subscribers also from our own network, which um, also was was very important. But um, still about the roles, I mean, we got um, also help with the smaller details. I mean, we could have we had some maybe some question raised, but by some. Um, potential investor investor and um, we knew that we could call our guy here at investor anytime sometimes we called him eight nine o'clock in the evening and, and and the telephone was all always open so we never felt like being stuck or being just left alone with, with, with this case which is important for us of course we know something about this but our main focus is uh, in, uh, on burgers. Yeah, and also one thing that we got really a lot of help with was the legal uh, aspects of, of right. uh, the, the, the share issue. Investor helped us with that, uh, how, to, how to formulate and, uh, and write all the, the protocols and, and stuff like that. And also, uh, yeah, purely legal questions that we had, what we, how we wanted to do things and so on. And also some, some good aspects uh, on, on marketing you also got from investor. So then is a question, are every 575 investors getting shares maximum was 980k and investments were made over 993? Uh, well the, the maxim, the, the answer has to be, be no there because we had the, the, the roof was 980 and uh, uh, I don't know if uh, if you from investor side want to comment on this one, but but uh, uh, that's what our decision is to maximum go to 980. That's exactly, and it, it's still we still have a clearing phase going on, and and it will be done here now, finished now within a two three days. Ah, there is also a question about how long the process was. Uh, when we came here today with Kai, we, we realized when we came through the door that it's not so many weeks since we came first time through this door. So um, the total from we, when we uh, made the first telephone call, I would say, uh, not being exact now, but I would say roughly about two and a half months. Yeah, because it took us... Uh, from when we decided to, to and made the agreement with the investor, it took us three weeks to make the, the, the pitch, 
before we went into the hidden phase, and then that was two weeks and one week, and that's a week ago. So that makes it a month to two and a half months. Yeah. yeah. So it went. Uh, we think it went quite fast. And um, and it didn't. Uh, of course, it took some some um, work and some hours from uh, for us also. But the, the working load was not um, uh, extremely uh, big, so to speak. We we were still able to to handle our main work and and uh, make sure that we sell some burgers, even if we had this process going on. There's still room for one or two questions if if you have any any question. And you are able to ask anything from friends and burgers because our one of our main values is also that that we um, there is no ugly questions. It's the same if you come to a restaurant and and want to want to know something about the food. There is uh, there's no questions that we we um, don't like to answer or questions that we don't like you to ask. Now I'm aiming a bit about the transparency in our concept. We strongly believe in being 100% transparent. Being able to tell everything somebody wants to know about our food and about our processes. And for those of you who have been in our restaurant, you can you have noticed that we also have an open front, open window, big open window to the kitchen. Also, a sign of the, 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 the transparent thinking we have in the company. Our customers should be able to look into the kitchen and make own judgment how clean the kitchen is and how, how the food is um, being made and, and coming out of the kitchen. And there's more, more questions. Three to five main tips for the company to success in growth, growth funding campaign. Uh, well, find the right partner. Uh, be ready to, 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 to work yourself to make the pitch because nobody else can write the pitch for you. The information there you have to put in yourself. Uh, be active when it comes to, 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 to selling the shares yourself. That's three that comes into my mind at least. That's very good. Let's say the next question. There's a couple of them here. How did you choose investor? That was, um, uh, that was, uh, it was actually a procedure for us also. We had, uh, looked into different ways of uh, uh, getting um, uh, equity and also different alternatives and uh, and um, uh, if we tell really the honest truth here now uh, the choice was quite easy after we had the first meeting with investor investor here we um, we had a strong feeling that this is the company we like to, to, to continue with and, and work with. So then there's another question in the, in the, in the, same, in the same manner here, or, or about the same thing. How many fin financiers did you go through? Well, actually, uh, we have been approached by, by a couple of, of, of uh, different companies and, and, and people, but uh, uh, we wanted to, to do a crowdfunding because we want also to activate our customers. So we have discussed with different people, but, but this was the model we, we chose to, to go with. What did you learn during the campaign? Um, I think we learned quite a, quite a bit of things. Uh, uh, we, we, um, uh, we learned that we, in a way, we have to treat our uh, potential invest investors exactly the same way as we treat our customers. 
it's about the product uh, somebody is interesting to 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 to, uh, to buy, and um, our uh, job is to communicate as clear and open as possible, and uh, to, to help them to their decision process. And um, you also learn during our discussions through the pro process that the company is, is changing quite a bit. It used to be a company with six founders and owners, and now we have more than 550 owners. So during the procedure and the campaign here, uh, there was many things that we, we 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 had to stop and think. Okay, so what is the what is the the, the um, impact impact in this for this question now for our uh, potential uh, new owners? And then we also also learn. I would say think about the campaign itself that. Um, Especially now when we talk about the the the, the uh, public face here, that uh, it is important to get the message out as clear as fast as possible. So we put some effort into to, to getting the the message spread in in social media, and, and that's important. So the last question here now then is. What is your realistic market share goal in European fresh castle se segment? Uh, this is a question that, um, uh, from one point of view, fresh casual is a, is a not a big market yet in Europe, but the fresh, the, the fast casual is growing really rapidly. But for us, we're not talking about market share. We because we want to grow uh, a couple of restaurants a year, but always keep an eye on the profitability. So we are not going for, for the huge growth. Uh, let's say we find two, play two good locations next year, three, perhaps four, 2018. That's a huge uh, growth for us. But we will still, during the coming years, be a, a small, quite a small player in Europe. But we don't mainly, we look at the size, we look at growth, of course, because that's our ambition. But, but we have always one eye on profitability, and we don't want to grow too fast so we can't handle the, the growth. Yeah. And then the second thing, which is, um, which is uh, maybe even more important than growth also, <coughs> besides profitability, is, is uh, that we are able to keep the quality. So we will always be a small, and our market share will be small because the market is huge, even fresh cash will grow, and become quite big. And we will be a small player, we think, but we try to be uh, not the biggest one, but the best one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. That was Petra and Kai from Friends and Burgers. Um, now we'll be moving on to Winlet, Billet from Winlet. And uh, unfortunately, I, and also I think I forgot to mention it at first, but unfortunately, the climb station who was meant to meant to be here had to cancel. Um, so uh, uh, we will only be having uh, Friends and Burgers and uh, Winlet today. But again, without further ado, I will uh, give. Ville, the um, presenter writes. So let's see. And there we go. Okay, and, uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, all, all's good. Show's all yours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys, from Friends and Progress. And first, I want to congratulate you. You have made already good job, and and I wish you good luck for the future. And by the way, you have delicious burgers in the restaurants. Uh, and uh, now I will shoot my pic shot my picture because the slow internet connection, and I will show you something interesting. Uh, just wait a 
second. Okay. Here you here you are. Uh, I would like to tell you about Winland and especially opportunity that we have opened in global markets. And at first, I want to tell you a little about our background. Uh, Winland was founded in year 2009, and we have already built healthy and continuous revenue stream in Finland. Uh, and our distribution of LED luminaires in Finland is primarily through resellers network that includes more than 600 electrician companies. They are around around to, uh, Finland. Uh, even though our business in Finland runs very well and is stable, investments in fast global growth require additional funding. So it means that financial plans for next year's includes investments mostly in marketing and R&D. We aim to globalize the sales through our lights applications. Uh, sorry. So what is lights application? Uh, lights uh, is the lighting designing tool for the architects who are using most famous lighting design software in the world called Revit. There are millions of Revit users around the world and uh, we are the first company that has succeeded in creating a practical tool that facilitates lighting design for the world's most popular architectures. Uh, Lights application is now completely finished and it was published in Autodesk App Store about one month ago. Actually, we haven't even officially launched it and there are already 700 happy users from 67 different countries. It has already been success and also surprised us positive way. So briefly, uh, Lights brings windlet luminaires to architects table. Uh, Lights is free to use and through the ecosystem pins end users to purchasing LED luminaires through Winlet. And I would like to tell a little, little about our marketing. Uh, I think the most important thing is that we have very talented and effective in-house marketing and communications team. They are using targeted marketing channels which are very cost effective as well. Uh, for example, we can reach over 1 million Revit users around the world from Facebook and target still ads and videos to them. And we also belong many professional Revit and architect groups in LinkedIn. Uh, it means that our knowledge about Revit professionals needs helps us to develop our applications even better. Actually, we have already reached really good feedback about lights all around the world. So, I think this is quite interesting when we are talking about sales and uh, there are some graphic about our actual and forecasted sales. And as you can see from revenue, global sales is scalable and efficient because of lights. It means that effective solution requires minimal operational requirements from us. Uh, and actually, we have calculated pretty conservative way that if we can get less than half percent of Revit users typing our luminaires through lights just in one project, expecting that project is worth of 5,000 euros. It means more than 30 million euros revenue. Just for to know that one small family house project is worth of 5,000 euros. So potential is huge. And our overall target is to reach 10,000 active lights users by end of year 2020. 
And also, this is not so nice as sales, but costs are also, also coming with the sales. And a uh, little about those costs, as I told about scalable business model, it doesn't mean that the expenses don't increase at all. In our case, major costs will significantly shift towards marketing the lights application from 2017 onwards, as well as R&D costs for improving the product and possible launching application to other platforms. And also staff recruitment will be needed as well. So, this was pretty short presentation and we have luckily time for the questions, but I will leave that income statement. There's two actual financial year and also forecasted years from 2016 to 2001. So you can, you can uh, look at it and if you have something question about it, I will answer. Uh, and I really recommend you get to know us better and take a look to investment opportunity on the investor website. And thank you very much about your time and I hope that we can see in our annual general meeting in the future. So, if you have questions, I hope you heard my presentation. Right, thanks, Ville. Uh, I'm going to be reading the questions for you, if that's okay. Yes. So, there's one question on when will you be launching the Lights application fully and start marketing activities? Uh, we will begin marketing activities uh, at the beginning uh, of next year, 2017. And uh, we, have, uh, we have launched it uh, about one month ago in Autodesk App Store. It's App Store where you can uh, download uh, applications to the softwares that uh, designers use around the world. So it's there now. Okay, so how has your funding run started so far? You have, you're at 60% subscribed. Uh, how long has it been open for and uh, how, has, how has the start been? Uh, it's been opened about four weeks and uh, yesterday uh, yesterday it opened in Investor. So we, uh, we made our own work uh, and pitched uh, our, our company and this share is to our own customers and, and uh, peoples and companies that we felt that we want to pitch. So it's been it's been open now four weeks and yesterday it opened in investor. And I, I'm quite uh, quite happy about uh, what we have got at this moment but our goal is more. Okay so uh, this next question uh, when do you expect the first sales to come through the lights application? Yeah, the gap between the designing and uh, that when you when you that when end user uh, makes order, uh, it depends about you know uh, what kind of building there is. Uh, I think uh, it it uh, it will be like from six months to twenty four months, so half year to two years. Uh, if you have very big building, uh, it takes little. A little longer, and if you have like a family house or warehouse or something smaller, it takes I think six months. So as you can see from our in income statement, uh, uh, there is a role for lead products world. Lead products uh, world. Uh, we are we are waiting first uh, order orders uh, in the year 2080. Okay, and another question, was the Lights application totally free of charge? Are there no hidden expenses? Uh, 
I'm not sure if I understand that question right. Uh, do you mean that uh, did that uh, light light is that free to use? Yes, I think that's that's what it means. Okay. Yeah, it's it's free to use to architect. So it's like a it's it's tool for the architects to uh, make their work uh, uh, easier and enjoyable, more enjoyable. So our idea when we uh, began a uh, few years ago was that if we can help our customers uh, in their work, it's uh, it's more it, it's easier and enjoyable. So we think that uh, those customers will be more commitment to us, and we have. We have got very good uh, experience about that, and and now we now we just expand uh, that ideology uh, to the architects, and we are uh, standing to the markets, which are much 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 bigger than we are we have operated uh, since this far. So is it architects only? It's architects and also uh, designers like engineer, engineers, uh, like electric designers who are uh, designing lights. So it depends uh, because uh, different countries and and uh, around the world there there's uh, different ways. Some places architect is the uh, head designer. Uh, but in some countries, there uh, might be like a engineer who is using Revit. So everyone who use uh, Revit uh, can be the user. Okay. Uh, so there's another question: of Why will someone uh, buy the Winlet lights when using the lights application? Uh, because. Uh, uh, if you think about uh, designing industry, uh, it has changed and it's changing uh, still. Uh, there is like a informa information based uh, designing uh, uh, style to do things now. And for example, uh, in Finland, every general building uh, it has it has to. Uh, Design like this information building, uh, information inf information model, and uh, we are the first company in the world who make that designing light lighting uh, in Revit. We we have uh, launched that lights application, and it's first application that uh, brings uh, luminaires to the table, and it's easy to uh, design and. To design those uh, luminaires to your, your to your uh, plan, that plan, uh, it's very very difficult to change those uh, luminaires after that, because of that uh, that model uh, it includes so much information that it it, it would be very big uh, work to do it. So it, 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 it's not like it was a few years ago. It's changing, and when you when you are now early, uh, more early uh, to you know implementing something like that to architect, I think they will be more commitment to us. And we have also good reference references because we have that uh, network, that distribution network, resellers who are electricians, and we have. We are very, very, very careful about our quality, our product's quality. But I think that product quality, it's, it, it's not only the thing in this case, because I think the thing is that uh, service that we have, made to the, we have made to the architects. Okay. Um, so looking at the numbers uh, and your um, revenue growth, it's been uh, quite nice since all the way since 2009. Um, how do you see that developing in the future, divided between the different uh, products and services? Uh, I think that we have always thinkered uh, our business like uh, it's not most important. We are increasing our sales 
uh, very fast. We want to uh, increase our sales like uh, it's it's not just one year sales and next year it will drop. Uh, we want to do like a long term. We, we want to make long term partners with our customers, and we have noticed that uh, uh, services uh, and and that kind of stuff to the customers uh, it's very important because because when they get used to use those services, uh, they will they will be more commitment uh, to us. So we we are going to increase our our sales also in Finland, uh, and we are we are taking care of our customers. Uh, but but I think that more scalable business model that uh, with that lights it will it will uh, increase our sales uh, in global uh, very 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 fast. I don't know was that answer good, but but, but it was answer. <laughs> <laughs> It's good enough. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, perhaps one or two more questions. Okay, there's uh, one about price competition. Um, yes. so how about the price competition? Uh, Chinese producers can do everything uh, much much cheaper. Offer everything much cheaper. Yeah, and I, I don't think that uh, the question is price. Of course, it it, it means something, and uh, also we have. Uh, we have uh, dropped our cross margin, as you can see from income statement, because we know that when we go global markets, it be, it will be so so huge, and and there will be some also price com competition. But but we we believe that uh, we have good quality products, uh, uh, and we don't believe that uh, we don't believe that. Uh, for example, uh, companies that uh, makes the, their uh, products as cheap as they can, they are very long-term companies. So I don't think our our price quality uh, relation is, is, is very well. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? If not... Okay, I think we can start wrapping it up. Okay, there's okay, one more. Um, uh, wait a second, this is in Finnish. So how how are you forecasting the revenue and, and the profits to make such a leap into from 2018 to 2019 uh, without any added uh, uh, personal, personal expen expenses? Uh, was the question at, at how our gas equivalents are going to be enough, or what? 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 what I, I didn't understand the question. Yes. What is what is the uh, leap in in revenue and and profits in from 2018 to 2019? How is that forecasted? What, 2018, what 2018 and and from 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 that up. From 2018 to 2019. Uh, Approximately quadruples. Yeah. Okay. The, the year 2000, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Uh, those are the years when uh, those uh, the lights will start realizing sales. Mm. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, when we when the sales uh, will increase, uh, we need also Money for producing those those uh, those products uh, and uh, and of course it's it, it's uh, it's uh, I'm sure that we will need also probably second round equity round when our sales are going to realize but I think that uh, I'm pretty sure that our valuation for example in that point is is much higher than it's now. So I, I I'm not sure if I answer right, but I try to answer something something if this is good enough. Mm. So uh, the, basically, looking at the income statement, the forecast growth in revenue from 2018 to 2019, it's mostly from international international markets. So lead products world, that is mostly the revenue growth. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then that our scalable uh, business model 
takes effect. It's it's like it, it takes it. There there's a time gap between 2017 when we are we are going to begin our marketing marketing and, and to to from the designing when architects are using starting to use lights application. It's the, it takes a little little while to the point that uh, sales comes to us. Uh, and and we are as you can see we are in, in increasing our our uh, sales in Finland as well. We have launched a leasing system to our customers in Finland. It has it has been good choice to us. It has realized sales in this financial year already, and and, and we have like we have. I think that without even that that uh, lead products world, uh, we have very 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 uh, very good business model in Finland. But this scalable chance and this lights application, with 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 uh, brings very good chance to uh, go to the global market. It's it's very 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 big opportunity for us, and we believe it it, it will be, I think, even more than you can see sales in this income statement. But this is pretty conservative evaluation about it. Okay, so uh, this is the last question. Uh, we'll have to cut a couple more questions that have come uh, off because we're running out of time. So uh, one last question, is the development still open? So I interpreted this as, uh, are you still developing the, the products? Yeah, we are still developing the products, but uh, I think that uh, Let, let industrial uh, in few years uh, the pr products are still developed. Uh, you have to develop the products, but I think that services are more m more uh, m most important thing. But of course, we have uh, we have an uh, we have in our product category we have products in our category now. Uh, there is patented patented uh, solutions and everything, and I think that. Uh, Uh, we are going to do product development as as far as we are operating with lead products and and and, and yeah I, I hope that answer satisfied yes great okay that's that's it for um, for the questions uh, thanks thank you Villa for all the for the pitch and the, the uh, answers and uh, that's more or less concludes our webinar. Bill, if you have anything anything more to say? No, I just, I just want to say to go go to investor website and and uh, get to know better us and if if you have any any questions don't hesitate to contact me and, and we can we can make a conversation things and and if you have already decided to make investment uh, invest invest money to win let uh, I welcome you, and and we will see you probably in annual general meetings in the future. But thank you very much. Great, thank you. So uh, as as usual, we'll be uh, sending you the recording of this webinar in a, a follow-up email, uh, or an email that's going to come from your webinar, and you can also send the recording on your channel in a couple of days. So thanks everyone for the for attending and for all the great questions, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.